Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back with Shenzhen IO. When we'd last left our heroes, Carl had been captured by the evil Baron von Schnapps. Hey y'all, y'all, you all, y'all, y'all. Sometimes it's tough to represent how a word really sounds in text, huh? I guess so. Take, for a totally random example, Shenzhen. How do you say it? It's what the ZH doing there. Can't you just ignore the H? Spoiler, you can't. ZH is his own sound in Chinese. I did actually end up knowing that. We don't have time to go into all the fun foibles of Pinyin, the official romanization system for Mandarin Chinese, so let's just give you a little shortcut. Say Shenzhen. You know, like you're talking to your best friend, Jen. Okay, forget about this. Passive infrared sensor. I'm in the process of setting up closer ties with top global firms and working to secure high-profile work for our company. The first result of these efforts is a contract to create some infrared sensors. This allows us to participate in the booming market in passive monitoring stations to detect illegal activities, illegal carbon emissions, illegal growing operations, illegal immigration. If it's against the law and it generates heat, we'll detect it. I'm wondering if this is a first small step on my path to becoming part of the surveillance state, and therefore perhaps a bigger plot in Shenzhen, Shenzhen I.O. Because we all know how this goes, you know, the deeper you get into it, the more sinister things, or the more dramatic things become. Anyway, so we got a simple input connected to it. That's a real-time clock, we have a sensor, we have an alarm. The alarm should be turned on whenever the sensor reads at or above 20 between the specified on and off times. Okay, and actually the on time is higher than the off time, so basically they want it to operate at night and not during the day. So I'm just looking at the number of inputs and since I have three analog lines and I don't have a controller with three analog lines, they only have two, I'm going to need like a sub-controller that handles the input from the real-time clock and uh, perhaps... no wait a second... Mm. now I think about it, I'll use the more complicated one up here and then I'll use the other one as a gate, right? So let me just move this here because I can stick my little real-time clock stuff up here. There you see that? So we'll connect these to the X inputs here and make the traces as short as possible because maybe they charge for solder, I don't know. And so the power output here will be via an X bus and no, that's the wrong type of bus. Let's delete that. There we go. So that will be my layout and I just need to now come up with the code that makes this thing tick. So this one has to test if P0, right, the sensor input is greater than 20, and if so, that means the alarm is triggered. So, uh, move P... no, wait a second, I want to move 100 into P1, otherwise we'll move 0 into P1, right? So those are my two states. And then we'll sleep for 1. Now, that will work, but it will fail when the timer isn't set. And we're going to have to put the timer code in here to basically set X1 high. X1 will go high when this is ready. So all we need to do is check here. And if it's not high, we need to skip through to the move zero, right? So we'll just do that there. NT. Now, if we're going to test if X0 is greater than zero I would imagine right and then if that is true then we want to oh no wait we don't we want to actually test if that is equal to zero then we want to jump through to NT right so we're gonna skip the next instruction we're gonna skip the test and we'll just go to the default off situation so that that should be correct that will run everything for us I can even you know make this a little bigger have the jump statement there now we need to work on the timer circuit. So we're going to check if um, P0 is greater than, uh, I think that'll be X0. I'm, I'm guessing, but I think it's X0. And if that is true, actually, um, now I think about it, maybe I should have this thing like flip state when the on time or off time is true. But uh, no, nah, I'm just going to stick with this mode. There's no, well, we'll see. If it fails, we'll be able to fix it. <laughs> I'm building this with an obvious bug and I don't care. So we're going to jump to the set section and set is here and set will move the value 1 into x0. Not x0, what am I saying? Uh, it's going to move it into x2 
because that's X3 there. Hold on, let me drag this out. That's X2. There we go. Yeah, need the need. To, if I could mouse over that, it might help. Okay. Yeah, I figure you know if there's a bug in this, I can just uh, we can sell a version two for a little more money, right? Anyway, after we've set this, we want to finish, so we want to sleep for one. But we don't. Ne we need to have some a way to jump directly to the sleep one if nothing else works. So there we go. Now, if we're going to test if P0 is less than X1, which is this second input, and if so, we're going to jump to set. And then finally, we fall through and we move 0 into the output line X2 and jump to the end. And this, this should do everything that we're told, everything that's in the verification. Yeah, look at this. Run, run, run. Oh, oh, wait, wait, there's a bug here. What is the bug? It's somehow... Okay, so see this, right? That's 84 as a value. And I've said if it's greater than 84, then uh, I need to jump. But it's greater than or equal to. And since there's no greater than or equal to, I just use less than and then trigger on the, on the negative state. See that? So it will fail to trigger if it's greater than and it works. Yes, look at this. Beautiful. It's beautiful. This thing runs with such perfection until you set off time to be greater than on time. Oh, wait, I missed another. There's another one here. What's the problem here? Input values, three. Um, that is expected to be 100. What? It's not a timing thing. Oh, there you go. Yes, uh, the, this, here, this here needs to be fixed. So, again, we do the same thing. Test less than. Check that um, there, and then set negative. And we should be all right now. There, so we flip those bits. And now our system should run once again. See, debugging. This is what you do in writing code. You gotta test it, test it, break it, keep breaking it, test it, and check for all those corner cases. And we are successful. Passive infrared sensor, one small step on our way to becoming an evil government mega corporation defense contractor. Oh, yeah, exactly. Ha! Huh. Hang on! We're becoming a defense supplier! There you go! What? I totally called it. Totally called it! Carl is gonna have, uh... He's gonna have conflicted uh, morals about this. I will be working remotely today and maybe tomorrow, just in case you're looking for me in the office. I thought you got back from your trip yesterday. I did! I've been stuck in a traffic jam on the way back from the airport since then. Oh yes, stuck in a traffic jam for 24 hours. Yes, when a city grows as fast as Shenzhen has, you get bad traffic. That's fantastic. Prototyping new ideas. Sometimes a decent product idea falls out when you're faffing around with chips and code and the like. So I set up an empty prototype board for us to experiment it. On you go then. Hmm, chips. We can test some different parts too, such as custom LED panels. I will add other panels as we receive them. Custom LCDs, are you serious? That's brilliant! We could make retro-style handheld games! Let's all take turns designing one. Oh yeah, we can create some awesome knockoffs like the Game Child or the Pop Station. However, I don't have the time to create cutting-edge electronic uh, entertainment devices, only to have some Englishman with a brown couch make fun of them. So instead, I create this really, really simple thing where uh, what happens is the number goes up fast and it goes down depending upon whether you're pushing the button and the trick is to land exactly on the number nine. There we go. Yes! That is my game. What a brilliant game. And now we are using tons of power. So that is me. That is my game. Uh, is it good enough game? There's no way for us to verify this, so we're trusting you. Keep holding. You promise you really made a game. Okay, we believe you. Great work. Fine work there. Well, I suppose it's my turn now. Hmm, what should I make a game about? Electrical engineering. Oh dear. How meta. 
Virtual Reality Buzzer. Apologies for the personal side here, I've met this wonderful girl named Xiaomi, and well, to make a long story short, she's set to move in with me in the next month. There's just one small issue, and it's something I thought maybe we could create a product to help with. See, where I'm doing my VR sessions, it's easy for someone to sneak up on me because I can't see or hear them. Awkward to say the least. This inspired me to think of a product, a simple vibrating buzzer that attaches to a VR headset so it can be felt even during the most intense sequences. A vibrating thing for your girlfriend? Really? That's the product? Okay, so we have a radio chip. Uh, this has non-blocking XBUS buffer. The non-blocking buffer will return a value of 999 when no input is made. Great! New design. Let us get to work on this. So we're gonna need, I think we're gonna need the more complicated one because we have to have a, like to use the DAT register to store whether we're on or off. There might be a way to do it with the MC4000, but I'm just going to work on this right now. So they are input, output, as simple as that. Now we just need some logic. Now, there is actually, there's three states here. There's 0, 1, and there's nine, minus 999, so I'm going to use the test compare function. And that actually has three output states, unlike the other two, the other three uh, test instructions. So what happens is it can either set pluses or minuses or neither of the of the above so if it's greater than we we are setting this so we're moving one into the dat to say hey we're working and then we're going to jump to the send routine now we need to execute for the case where we get minus 999 and in this case we just want to jump straight to the send routine i wonder if there's a plus minus operation i wonder if you can put the plus and minus on the same line don't know but that's uh worth thinking about. And finally, if the value of x0 is 0, we fall through both of those conditional instructions and we just need to set the data state to off. So now we're in the send routine, right? So send has to send this like oscillating thing. It says a buzzer that flips up and down. And uh, well, we're going to basically test to see if data is high or dat is greater than zero. So if dat is greater than zero, we are in the sending mode and we need to figure out how to send an alternating pulse like we've seen in the various other ones where we usually just use the not function for brevity. So move one into P1 and no wait, this may not be, I think I may have made a slight miscalculation here. <sighs> Let me just think. So actually I think what I should do is as well as jumping, we should actually set the accumulator to like 100, right? So that will basically initiate the pulse. So we're going to prime our pulse, let's say. And then we're going to actually make sure that we do this not thing. Move the accumulator to P1. And then we're going to not that so that it flips status. But of course, we need to prime the accumulator with state zero for when we uh, for when we basically have you know no signal that we're sending. So we need to move that into the accumulator. Yeah, and I'm doing this wrong. I'm <laughs> I'm thinking about this a little too hard. So hold on. Uh, let me just check. I've, my lo I don't need that move there. The move should come after the knot. The knot should only execute conditionally. Then we'll move the accumulator into P1 and we do not need to prime the accumulator because we're going to knot it automatically. There we go. So that will be your loop and I think, I think we can just sleep now. And that should work. Simulate. Buzz. Yes, your girlfriend loves that buzzer. She loves the square wave action. Oh yes, the square wave action is just what the lady wants. Research has shown that the square wave is the best way to pull someone from the clutch of virtual reality. Success. But I think I can do better on this whole thing. You see, the number of instructions executed is basically our power requirement. So what I think I can do is we can basically add extra sends here. So instead of doing this not, we're just going to move 100 into P1 and then you know, sleep for one moment. And then we're going to move zero into P1. So that is our oscillation thing. And that means that we should actually execute fewer instructions when the buzzer is going because we won't have to test. You see, ending on a zero, 
Look, you see that? So when the buzzer is running, we're using less power. Bizarrely. Yes, the p buzzer running means that we have used less CPU power. And I've made a tiny improvement. Excellent. You see, this is what it's all about. Optimization. Wonderful. This is exactly as I had imagined it. But I'm not done with the optimizing. You see, I didn't need the accumulator in that last version, right? So I can use the accumulator to hold the status. So can the question is, can I fit it in? So we need to be careful with our line number here. And we're going to start with another test. And we need to do the compare TCP. Nothing to do with TCP stacks. This is just a, an instruction mnemonic in this strange assembly language. Although I'm pretty sure there are actual assembly languages that use TCP. So again, if it's true, we need to jump. No, we need to figure out what we're doing. If it's not true, we're going to jump to uh, like the send routine, which will send nothing. Uh, I'm actually just thinking this through. So the logic here is going to be really critical because we're going to run out of lines if we're not careful. If it's true, now we need to make sure we don't execute this. We actually need to set the state first. Uh, we need to set the state. Uh, move one into the accumulator to show that we are hot. And then I guess we would technically need another jump after this. Um, let me just think about this because I think we need at least four instructions for the the sending, uh, and we'll need we need five lines at the end for the send routine minimum. So I think I have eight lines here. Oh man, this is really really messing my head. So I don't think I can afford to have an extra jump here because I think I need five instructions at the end of this. Um, you know, so we're we're really going to hit the instruction limit here. But I, I I'm sure there's a way to do this. I'm just going to figure out. Let's just actually build out everything else. We'd move zero into the accumulator, which of course, at this point, we're gonna override what's in the accumulator register, but maybe there's a way that I can do something and then undo it. So we need to test if the accumulator is equal to zero, I guess. Test accumulator equal to zero, and then in that case, negative. Move 100 into P1, uh, and again, sleep sleep if and one and then we move zero into p1 and then we sleep right oh wait mog no this is not a final fantasy game now this is nice but the logic at the top is not correct there must be a way for me to rearrange this i'm not saying i'm hoping there's a way for me to rearrange this so the idea is that TCP will only execute either negatives or pluses, or it might execute neither of them. And what I want to do is there's some like mathematical instruction I can do to the accumulator to make it uh, override the state, or put maybe I do something into the accumulator and then do something else to it that won't get unset except when I need it. I. Uh... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just thinking my way through some very simple logic here. And again, so that executes that. You know what? I wait. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. I know exactly. So, so what we're going to do here is it will still, you don't have to have the plus or minus instructions immediately following this. So we can move zero into the accumulator, right? We can move uh, one into the, and then immediately move one into the accumulator if that is set, right? And does that work? Now, hold on. Uh, let me just check. And then, and then, and then. That will fall through. That will fall through. And by falling through, we save a jump instruction. Uh, we don't really, we don't really need an extra jump instruction. So we're below our thing. But now we need to make sure that the move zero doesn't get executed when the state is 999 so we need to have a, a minus jump to the end sequence and we're done we're done look we've done it in a smaller thing so we've saved like a we've gone from a cost of five to a cost of three and this is totally working awesome so let's run it and see where i ended up i knew there was a way i just had to wrap my head around all this logic 
Brilliant! And with that improved result, I think it's time to uh, say farewell. Be back with more. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.